regarding the quarantine ground on Staten Island where Thomas Alsop's granddaughter died. It was created by New York State in 1799 on Staten Island, on land owned by St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. It can be traced back to at least 1802 in the papers as a place where ships quarantined upon arrival to the city and where people sick with pandemic illnesses were kept away from the public. A yellow fever epidemic hit New York City in the years 1795 to 1804. Thousands of people died, and out of this came the quarantine ground and the Board of Health. Scholar Claude Edwin Heaton writes about the pandemic in New York, noting how the authorities were desperate to stop the pandemic while also desperate to pretend it wasn't happening. He writes, A group of physicians calling themselves the College of Physicians of New York held a meeting at City Hall and reported that nothing was happening when it came to contagious fever. Then the Committee of Health followed along on August 29, 1795, claiming that the disorder was a local malady and the number of sick considerably decreased. This despite everyone knowing that Philadelphia and New York were sharing the fever like stuff mixed together in a petri dish. Heaton continues, a letter of the same date received in Philadelphia from a New York correspondent expressed a different view. The fever rages chiefly in Water Street. My family and myself are unfortunately in the midst of it. There are buried from our neighborhood eight or ten every night. God only knows what will become of us. The Evening Post in August of 1848 advocated for a better quarantine system, writing, whether the one or the other of these opinions be true, the duty of our city council to take immediate and vigorous measures for the purification of the streets is apparent. The cleanliness of the city has been by no means remarkable during the season, even for New York, proverbial for her neglected streets, beautiful slattern that she is. It is generally the case that we cannot get our city sweetened during a hot summer without some serious alarm in regard to the public health. And if this good effect shall follow now, we shall not regret that the apprehension has been felt. Whether the domestic origin of the yellow fever be true, or that of its propagation by infection in a bad atmosphere, if we make the city clean and the air wholesome, we go far in providing for the public safety. The ordinance of non-intercourse which the city authorities have adopted in regard to Staten Island is a most inconvenient one, and it is well to consider whether some other measure might not be substituted for it, which even on the principles of the contagionists would guard as effectually against the communication of the disease. The Lazarado system of the continent of Europe is equally effectual and infinitely less prejudicial to commerce. There, large hospitals are set aside for the reception of patients arriving in port sick with diseases reported to be contagious. The persons employed in visiting the ships and bringing the sick to the hospitals have their abode within the walls of the lazaretto, the entrance to which is vigilantly guarded, and all communication with the rest of the city prohibited during the prevalence of the distemper. The pestilence in this manner is confined within the enclosure of the lazaretto, where every medical appliance is used, but the rest of the city is exempt from the disease and suffers no alarm. By the edict of non-intercourse which has been adopted, we are attempting to make a great lazaretto of Staten Island, but without success, for there are a thousand indirect ways of getting to the quarantine ground and back again, which cannot be guarded against. Let the hospital only be made the lazaretto, and let the persons who visit the vessels and are employed in situations where the disease may be contracted or about the persons of the sick be inmates of the hospital and live within its enclosure, and you may make your prohibition of communication as complete as you please. If a cessation of intercourse between the city and the hospital will answer the purpose, it is an improper stretch of power to extend the non-intercourse to several neighborhoods and villages. We hope that these considerations will be weighed by those who have the ordering of this matter. Measures should be taken which will put the public mind at ease, and the mode which we have suggested seems to us more calculated to remove the causes of alarm than any other. 
we are informed that it might be carried out effectually without any essential addition to the expense of the city.